Hi, Brian Costley of Sargent and Greenleaf here today to take a look at what's involved in installing a Sargent and Greenleaf Model 2006 Titan pivot bolt lock on a typical safe door. As safe lock installations go, this one is really pretty simple, so let's get started. This is fairly simple bolt work. There is a relock device. We'll relieve the spring tension on it, and then when I turn the handle from outside, you can see how the lock bolts retract. There is a bolt detent mechanism that keeps the bolts retracted while the door is open. When the door is closed, this release mechanism hits the frame, releases the hold back, and the bolts can snap forward to the locked position under spring tension. Let's see how the pivot bolt interfaces with this mechanism. The pivot bolt lock can be mounted vertical up, can be mounted left hand, it can be mounted vertical down, or it can be mounted right hand. This bolt work configuration requires a lock that's mounted vertical up so it can interface with the blocking bar that's part of the bolt work. And because the blocking bar moves in this direction, we'll need the flat part of the pivot bolt to face the oncoming bolt work blocking bar. So it'll need to be mounted this way. We can mount the pivot bolt like this, or we can flip it and mount it like this. This is what's required for this particular installation. Before we attach the pivot bolt lock to the safe's mounting plate, we need to plug in the lock cable. At one end of the lock body, there is a telephone type receptacle, and there's a matching plug on the cable. When we click that into place, we know we have a good solid connection. Because this lock is going to be mounted this way, we need to run the cable through this recessed channel in the case and hold it in place during our installation. I'll just put a small piece of painter's tape. You could use masking tape, scotch tape, virtually any kind of a tape. It just needs to hold temporarily while we install the lock up against the safe's mounting plate. Now we can run the lock cable through the spindle hole in the safe door. Pull it through gently from the front side. Move our lock up against the mounting plate. Now in your accessory kit for the lock there are two types of mounting screws. One is kind of a yellowish color and that denotes that it's a metric thread screw. We're going to be using standard threads, quarter 20, and so we'll be using the silver colored screw. Put that screw into place and then use our screwdriver to fasten down at three locations, here, here, and here. I like to put in all of the screws loosely at first to make sure we can get even tightening pressure and also that there's no undue stress placed on the lock case as we tighten these screws into place. Now we can tighten this one. We'll tighten this one. And finally this one. And our lock is securely in place. And we notice that it is indeed blocking the motion of the bolt work. Let's properly attach the cable for our relock device. For that I'm going to use a short 832 screw with a washer underneath the head. We'll put that through the loop provided in the relock device cable and removing the spring tension as much as we can from that. We'll get this screw started in the hole provided in the lock case. And that screw, the threaded portion of that screw can be no more than 150 thousandths of an inch in length. If it goes too far into this hole provided in the lock case, it will actually dimple the underside of the blind hole and it can interfere with a portion of the lock mechanism. So remember, the threaded portion of this screw that goes into the lock case can be no more than 150 thousandths of an inch. Just as with the Titan lock body, Mounting of the standard one battery keypad is very straightforward. At the base of the keypad there's a yellow tab attached to the battery drawer. We pull on the tab, remove the battery drawer, and set it aside. The lock cable will be pulled through this hole at one side of the mounting base. On the back we can see there's a recessed channel and that's where the cable will reside. As we move the base up against the door and locate the attaching screw holes. 
Now we can take an 832 screw provided. There are also a set of M4 metric screws in the accessory kit and those will have either a slightly yellow or a slightly pinkish tint so that you can identify them easily as the metric screws. The bottom screw goes through this hole provided where the battery compartment will be once we have it installed. Once we get, begin to snug those screws down we'll line up the keypad so it looks like it's nice and straight on the safe door. Tighten the screws. And now we see that our keypad base is in place and we're ready to attach and mount the number pad. We have one small task to perform before we mount the number pad. In our accessory package there was this small circular disc with two standoffs. We'll grab the standoffs between thumb and finger and simply press them into this opening that we used to install our bottom keypad base mounting screw. Now we can see it's securely in place and this will support the back of the number pad once we have it installed. Now we'll attach the number pad. We'll connect our two cables. The white plug goes into the white receptacle. This is our power cable. The lock cable plugs into the black receptacle. Both of these connectors are keyed or configured so they'll only go into their receptacles one way. Now we take the excess cable and we place it into the open areas in the keypad base. We place the tab at the top of the number pad into a receptacle at the top of the keypad base and then press in at the bottom. It clicks into place and now we can secure the number pad in place using this small 832 Phillips screw. There is also a one-way screw in the package for high security uh, installations normally required by EN 1300 or VDS but for most applications we'll simply use the Phillips head screw. That way if we ever have to take it out in the future to service uh, it'll be much easier to do so. Now we can take our self-stick S&G logo peel off the paper backing, press it into place over the screw. Our battery compartment will receive a 9 volt Duracell or Procell alkaline battery. You can see that the top of the battery drawer is configured so that the battery can only go in easily in the correct orientation. So it's very difficult to get your polarity mixed up. Insert the battery drawer in the opening in the keypad base. It will click into position and the lock beeps to indicate that it's powered up and ready to go. Now we can check our code. The factory default code is 123456 followed by pound. And we can see that the lock operates. If I manually depress the bolt work detent, the bolt work extends to the locked position we can see that everything is operating normally. Normally we would check the lock at least three times for proper operation with the door open. After I do that then I'll feel comfortable closing and locking the door. Note that when the bolt work turns to the locked position and the tighten lock bolt can return to its locked position, we get two flashes of the red LED and a double beep from the lock. By the way, once your installation is complete and you're satisfied everything is working as it should, you can remove the battery compartment and if you wish, pull off this yellow tab that makes it easier to get the battery compartment out and you can reinstall that battery drawer. Now in order to get it out, you simply pull forward on a little lip that's on the bottom of the battery drawer and it will drop out of the lock. And the only thing that remains to be done is to install the door cover plate over the bolt work mechanism inside. Here's simple instruction on how to change the code 
on your Titan pivot bolt lock. The factory default code is one, two, three, four, five, six, pound. We can see that the lock operates and when it relocks, we'll see the double flash of the LED and hear a double beep. In order to change this, we begin by pressing either 2-2 two, two star or 3-3 three, three star. Either sequence will work correctly. So we'll press 2-2 two, two star. Now we'll put in our existing code, which we know to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, followed by pound we get five beeps. Now we'll put in our new code and we're going to make it six, five, four, nine, eight, seven, followed by pound. Now we'll put in that same new code again in order to verify our new code. Now we've changed to a new code of six, five, four, nine, eight, seven, followed by pound, we can see that the lock operates on that new code. We'll also be able to see that the lock no longer operates on the factory default code of one, two, three, four, five, six. We get a long tone and a longer light of the red LED. That's an error tone and an error light, which tells us we have entered an incorrect code. So we know for a fact that we've changed from the factory default code to a code of our own choosing. If I enter five or more incorrect codes in a row, the lock goes into a penalty time. Penalty time is simply there to keep someone from sequentially entering codes or randomly entering codes, hoping to stumble upon the operating code for the lock. So they get five attempts. When they get five incorrect entries in a row, the lock goes into penalty time. And then any time a button is pressed, a double beep and a double light of the LED occurs. And that tells you beyond a doubt that the lock is in penalty time. So what do we do? We simply wait 10 minutes and then we can enter what we know to be the operating code and everything should work normally. Let's wait until 10 minutes elapse. Through the magic of video editing, 10 minutes have elapsed. We'll enter our known working code, followed by pound, and the lock operates again and it will operate normally until someone enters five incorrect codes in a row again and then the lock will again go into penalty time. If during penalty time the battery power is removed from the lock, the penalty timer stops right where it is and does not resume counting down the 10 minute penalty time until power is reapplied to the lock. Changing the battery is very straightforward on the standard one battery keypad. Simply pull forward on the little lip at the base of the battery drawer, then pull the battery drawer out of the bottom of the keypad base. Uh, this is a non-recommended battery. S&G recommends Duracell brand alkaline batteries or Procell brand alkaline batteries. They're actually the same thing. We put the new battery in the battery drawer. Notice that there are two different sized openings for the terminals of the battery, so it's almost impossible to get a battery in backwards. And then we simply reinsert the drawer. The lock beeps to indicate that it's powered up and ready to operate again, and we can check our code. We always recommend that battery changes and the following code check be performed with the safe door open. If your battery becomes depleted to the point where it will no longer operate the lock, no operating codes, no programming information will be lost since it's all stored in non-volatile memory. Simply change to a new alkaline Duracell battery and your lock will be right back in business and operate just the way you programmed it.